Hi, my name is Tony Kovach, and I'm the artist in residence here at Liberty Bellows in Philadelphia. I want to welcome you back to our series of instructional videos for the piano accordion. In the previous lessons of this unit, we studied klezmer, Balkan music, and musette. Today, we're going to explore the genre of gypsy jazz and use our new knowledge to play the song Dark Eyes. <laughs> Gypsy jazz is a guitar-driven, fast-paced swing style developed by Django Reinhardt in the 1930s and 40s in Paris. Many of the staple tunes of the genre were essentially remixes of well-known American or European songs, such as our song of the day, Dark Eyes, which was composed in Russia in the mid-1800s and was well-known across the continent. The original version of Dark Eyes was actually a waltz, which was adapted by Django in his 4-4 swing version. Therefore, today we're going to learn the original waltz version before adjusting the meter to make it a gypsy jazz feel. Today we're back to the key of D minor, which has one accidental, B flat. Let's play the D minor scale. The three most common chords in the key of D minor are the tonic, D minor, the subdominant, G minor, and the dominant, A7. Dark Eyes has an interesting chord progression because it starts on the dominant, A7. So you're going to play two measures of A7, two measures of D minor, then two more measures of A7, two more measures of D minor, then two measures of the subdominant, G minor, two measures of D minor, two measures of A7, and we end with two measures of D minor. So the whole progression is A7, D minor, A7, D minor, G minor, D minor, A7, D minor, You'll notice as we go through the song that there is a C-sharp. That's because our dominant chord, A7, has a C-sharp as the third. If you worked through how to play a 32 bass accordion, you might remember that this is a common feature of the harmonic minor scale, to have a major dominant chord. The first two phrases of the song hover around the note A. It's going to start on a G-sharp. Even though G-sharp is not in the scale, it's a fun color tone. Notice the first two phrases are identical, and I'm using a crossover fingering. That puts me in a good position for the third phrase. I'm going to keep my thumb on the A and play the D with my fourth finger. And then up to the E. And then we're going to play the F with our fourth finger. Then back down. Then back down to the G-sharp with our crossover fingering. And the last three notes are E, F, D. So here's the entire melody. So now that we know the traditional version, let's turn it into a gypsy jazz tune. First of all, instead of playing it as a waltz, let's play it in 4-4 with alternating bass. In the right hand, instead of trying to play the original melody, let's simplify it. Instead of playing... We're just going to change it to this. So let's apply that rhythm throughout the song. To really 
really get a swing feel, we can add a chordal section with this chordal rhythm. Now let's talk about improvisation. The general rule for jazz improvisation is that you're going to use the scale that relates to the key. So we're going to use the notes of D minor. The only exception is if one of the chords we're playing in the left hand contains a pitch that is not contained in the scale. Then we're going to want to play that pitch, the one in the chord, instead of the pitch in the scale. So let's check our chords and see if any of the pitches of those chords don't match up with the notes of the scale. Our first chord, A7, is A, C sharp, E, G. Already we found one note that doesn't fit the scale, C sharp. So anytime we're playing an A7 chord in the left hand, we're going to want to play a C sharp instead of a C natural. Our D chord consists of D, F, and A. All three of those are in the scale. Our subdominant consists of the notes G, B flat, and D all of which are part of the D minor scale. So now I'm gonna teach you a demo solo to help you start crafting your own licks. So for the first four bars, we're going to highlight the A7 chord by playing an A and a C sharp. And then we're going to descend. Here it is again. The second phrase is going to start the same way. And then we're going to play an A7 arpeggio. Here that is again. So the first half of the solo sounds like this. In the next phrase, we're going to highlight a G minor chord starting with our pinky on D. Here it is again. And then we're going to do a similar move with D minor starting with our pinky on A. We end it on a C sharp because the next chord of the song is an A7. And then we're going to play a similar motif to what we started the solo with. Here that is again. The second half of the solo sounds like this. Let's try the whole thing. Congratulations, you just finished the unit How to Play a 96 Bass Accordion. Join us in our next unit as we focus on playing chord combinations and jazz harmonies. Thanks for watching.